Chemical equations. Well, the ingredients or reactants as we call them on the left hand side of the equation and what you produce, the products, on the right hand side and maybe above the arrow you're going to put the conditions or a catalyst used. Now the number and type of atoms must be the same on both sides as must the charge but we won't worry about the charge until a bit later on in unit 9. Alright then, so carbon and oxygen goes to CO2. You can see there's one carbon, there's a couple of oxygens on the left and on the product side, it's the same. It doesn't actually need balancing. This one's a balanced equation. Well, that wasn't so hard. And it's a subtle difference here. It's CO as the product, carbon monoxide. So you might think, well, let's just move the two then. Now it's balanced. No, big, big mistake. You can't change the little numbers. It's my job to put the little numbers down, and you can't change them. Do not change the little numbers. They're called subscripts. You have to keep that there. But if I put a two, and a two there, now it's balanced. Two carbons on each side, two oxygens on each side. So what does that two mean? Well, it just means I can't be bothered to write it out twice. So I'll put a big two there. Chemistry has the most new words of any subject in IB, and the new word here is coefficients. Those big numbers are the coefficients that you use to balance the equation. You can change the big numbers, just don't touch those small numbers. Oh, and another one here, CH4 and O2 goes to water and carbon dioxide. And so this is a long-winded way of balancing it. You'll be able to do it in your head soon enough. So you can see that there's two hydrogens. I'll just put a four there. No, no, we talked about that. You're not going to do that. You can't change the small numbers. You have to put a big number there. So a big two. Excellent. Oh. But now the oxygens don't balance. There's four there, and two on the reactant side. I'll put a big two there. Ah, now everything's balanced again. A couple of little tricky things. For this process here, I I'd rather balance with fractions. You might think, oh, we can't have half O2, because that's O. Mm -mm. Those big coefficients, those coefficient numbers, uh, can be representative of moles, not just molecules. So it's really half a mole of O2. And if you don't like the fractions, then just fix it. In this case, double it. And the final little trick is you don't have to split everything up into its components in your mind. For example, NO3 appears on both sides. So don't bother to split that up when you're trying to balance. Try and keep it as a unit. And so that big two there would fix it. That's now balanced. General rules. I don't think there is one rule in chemistry without an exception, but generally, for balancing, balance what occurs once on each side first, balance hydrogen and oxygen last, and worry about the charges when you get to the redox unit.